Okay, here we are, our first module for the World War II unit, Causes of World War II. Now this, of course, is going to be closely related to how World War I ended. And you'll see before you now, you'll see before you now there, it says the legacy, what happened because of World War I created these two things, political instability, the political organizations as in the governments, the countries, were not stable, and economic devastation in Europe. And those two things included the items you see before you in bold. So you can pause the video and look at them, but we're going to investigate each one individually, so let's continue. Political instability. The picture of the Jenga game helps you understand what does unstable mean. It's something that is likely to fall apart. It is not stable. It is not well built. And that and the economic devastation helped to lead to World War II. Now, this comparison of maps helps you understand what does political instability look like. Well, you see the countries of Europe before World War I, and then on the right you see the countries after World War I. And there are several countries, mainly Germany, Austria, Hungary, that lost lots of territory. And some countries, such as Serbia, that kind of ceased to exist. They were kind of taken into another country, such as Yugoslavia. And you can see that there was a country, Poland, that took, well, it didn't take anything. It wasn't there before. But it took territory from Germany and Russia. So you can stop and you think the countries that lost the most would be the angriest. And you look at this map, and you say, well, Austria-Hungary and Germany lost a lot. And the thing is, is they didn't lose territory just here. They lost it around the world. But the fact that many people living in some of these areas here would have felt, hey, I'm really German. I want to be in Germany. But yet they're in another country. That's going to make the stability of this new country, Czechoslovakia, not so strong. And then you stop and you think, hey, wait a minute. Austria and Germany were told they couldn't get back together. That was part of the Treaty of Versailles. That's going to make them kind of angry and lead to possible plans in the future at some time of getting back together anyway. Unstable conditions not going to last. And then devastation. What does devastation mean? Well, you can look at pictures and you can see devastation. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a picture of the devastation in Japan after the tsunami uh, a while back. So you can see devastation. But we're not talking about buildings in this kind of devastation. No, we're talking about economic devastation, how people earn money, what they do with money, how they use money. So there you go. What does economic devastation mean? Well, you might buy a pack of gum for a buck fifty now, but uh, then later on, a little while later, it's going to cost eight bucks. And what if it's going to cost three dollars only a week before that? And what if next month, yes, I know I misspelled cost. What if next month it's going to cost 24 bucks? You are devastated, really upset because the economic devastation of the rising prices and otherwise the loss in value of the money you have to spend is going to devastate you, really upset. No more gum for you. Then you can kind of combine two and four together, ability to earn money. How do you have ability to earn money? Well, you have a job. And if you don't have a job that you can afford the basics such as clothing, food, shelter, you're going to be devastated. Then if you owe lots of money that you don't have it to pay back, that's going to make your life kind of hard. You're going to be devastated there again. So you put all that devastation together and it produces what? Probably either depression or that depression comes out as maybe anger. Yeah. And you might be looking for somebody to tell you it's not your fault. It's their fault. So this economic devastation could help to lead to World War I. And then you add all of that problem, which was going to happen anyway because of the way the Treaty of Versailles happened, to this worldwide depression that broke out. See, it wasn't just in the United States that you just learned. This depression was worldwide. Let's look at a combination graph map that shows us this. Obviously, those columns that represent unemployment, the tallest ones are in Germany, which means the unemployment was worse in Germany than in other places. And in most of the countries, if you look at the three columns, the one on the left represents 1920 all the way to the one on the right that represents 1934, that the unemployment got worse through time. But strangely enough, in Germany, between 1932 and 1934, unemployment was cut about in half. And you can also see the economic devastation that was worse in Germany and Poland because that was where the industrial production dropped the most, over 30% based on that color of dark color of green. 
But going back to that question I was about to ask, why did the unemployment in Germany drop so much between 1932 and 1934? What changed in that time period? Hmm, something major. You'll have to stay tuned to the coming lessons so that you can learn why that was. Then there's this high war debt. Debt as in the reparations part of the Versailles Treaty that said they had to pay boatloads of money. Well, what does this boatload of money translate into in today's money? Roughly one trillion seven hundred eighty two billion two hundred and fifty five million six hundred and seventeen thousand four hundred and twenty nine dollars and ninety four cents. And of course they didn't have it all. Hmm. But even the amount they were paying, is that going to make it life easier on people in Germany or harder? I think you know the answer to that. It would make it harder. And along with hardness comes anger. And just be certain to remember, it wasn't just cash. They had to pay in, pay in goods produced by factories. These factory goods not going to people in Germany to help out with their growing economy after World War One. So those goods would basically provide little value to Germany, making it even worse to produce goods and then ship them out of the country. Then there's hyperinflation. Now you think of what it means when somebody calls you hyper, like you're really excited, super excited. Well, hyperinflation means inflation is really, really high. What is inflation, Mr. Stevens? Prices go up. 1914, and the value of the money goes down. Five German marks is equal to about one American dollar. 1923, one trillion marks is equal to one American dollar. That's a lot. But this table and few words helps you understand it even more. In February of 1920 to May of 1921, prices went up 4.6%. Then you say 634%, that's a huge increase. Then you say June, July of 1922 to June of 1923, prices went up 18,000%. That's like really a lot. Then you see from July 1923 to November 1923, just a few months, that went up hundreds, thousands, millions, 854 billion percent. What does that mean? Something that cost you $5 in February of 1920 is going to cost you four trillion two hundred seventy billion dollars by November 1923. So that uh, McDonald's extra value meal that you might get for around five dollars in February of 1920. No, no, McDonald's didn't really exist. We're using this as an example. That extra value meal of five bucks would cost you four trillion dollars just a few years later. What would that cost? Will you see it before you? The biggest thing it caused would be anger. But that's what happened to this paper money that really was worthless, had no value. Using it as wallpaper, gluing it up on your wall to cover it. Children would take the stacks of money and use them as play toys. People would also use them to start fires in their ovens. And there's a problem of massive unemployment, massive as in really big. 31.7% when unemployment was at its worst in Germany. Now you've already seen that one graph that showed how high it was. But here's a number that shows you how high it was. One out of every three Germans was out of work, meaning they had no money to pay for anything, not even food. They'd have to depend on handouts. And you could see that this was a tense situation. Now, how can I tell this was a tense situation at this German bread line? Because these two gentlemen right here are German police. They're there to keep order. Even more scary than the possible riots and fights here as people fight to get bread is this. This graph, simple graph, shows you German unemployment, but it combines it with a graph line showing the growth of the share of the vote of the Nazi party, National Socialist Workers Party, the party who had a certain Adolf Hitler as the leader. Obviously you can see it. As unemployment jumped around and then spiked up in 1928, so also spiked up the Nazi share of the vote. And what will that lead to? Stay tuned to the next learning resource. Goodbye.